I tell you, I come here from the Hamilton Mountain of the Sacred Heart grade school, and I came to Cathedral absolutely terrified because of the reputation I went before. I came into grade nine, I was the smallest kid in my class, and it, and it seemed to me that there were a lot of kids around who didn't come from the same kind of background that I did. And I always found it interesting, whether I was a student or a teacher or a coach, about all the different countries everybody came from. And I always am proud of that fact that there's every race, there's every religion, there's every socioeconomic group that went to Cathedral, and somehow we managed to get along, play together as a team, and um, you know, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, the senior team in those days, the senior boys basketball team was led by names like uh, Jim Daly, who went on and became principal, coach. He was my coach for one year at Cathedral, 1968-69 year. And, uh, and then he, of course, became the director of the Board of Education here. So the, the, the names that have been around Cathedral for a long time uh, have very deep roots, you know. Now there are other dailies around the Cathedral program, his sons. I was four foot six in grade nine and maybe a hundred pounds soaking wet. And I can remember we won the city championship, went undefeated my midget year. The coach was a guy named Bob Knuckle and uh, Art Sampson. Won the city championship, went undefeated when I moved up to junior. My first year senior, we only lost one game and that was the Ontario championship game. And then my last year, we lost in the semifinal of the All-Ontario. So I'm very fortunate and blessed that in my high school career, we only lost two games in that whole time. So, you know, I was surrounded by a lot of great players. It wasn't because I was on the team, it was because we had a lot of great players, great athletes, great people, people who had a lot of mental toughness, physical toughness, basketball ability, and I just happened to be part of that crowd. Well, in the 60s, uh, I remember our 1968 All-Ontario Championship team, we averaged 100 points a game that year, and that was before the three-point shot. So that's pretty rare. And our, our whole mantra in those days was all about defense. Don't let anybody cross half court, because nobody's gonna score from beyond half court. And we pretty much did that to teams, and uh, sometimes I guess we were pretty uh, unmerciful, but uh, but the stars in that team were, you know, uh, Jerry Simpson, who uh, went on to play at Mac, Paul Mazza, who became a lawyer in our community. The other starters in those days were Peter Hamilton, Al Smithson, who also came from Sacred Heart Parish with me. That was the five of us. I was the other starter on that team. You know, our, our coaches in those days, Father Kennedy was our coach, and he was a brilliant guy, and one of his terms was, I want you playing defense when they get off the bus. You know, as soon as they come into the gym, we we're gonna go toe to toe, baseline to baseline. And in the old girls school gym, that was by the way, uh, smaller than this court is sideways. It was an amazing feat to be able to, to watch a team being able to execute in that such a confined space, you know? And, I can remember coaches coming in to recruit from all over the states of the teams I coached in the 80s. Um, and they would walk into the old boys school gym where the top of the key touched the center circle and there wasn't enough room for a three point circle, a uh, three point arc. So maybe that's why there wasn't ever one in those days. But in that gym, people would walk in and they would say, what planet am I on here? When we used to use the girls' school gym, we had to do so by permission of the girls' school administration, making sure that they weren't using it that day. And so we could never practice there uh, because the girls' school teams were practicing. We would use it for our games. So although we practiced in the boys' school and the girls' school was our home, home court gym, uh, it was a visiting gym for us because we never got to practice there very, very rarely. Uh, maybe over the Christmas holidays when the girls weren't practicing, but that was about it. 
In terms of the one lost column, the 80s and 90s were probably the most prolific. Although when I was doing my research for the reunion, I found out that in every decade of the public record, so that's the 40s all the way through to 2000, Cathedral won the city championship five out of 10 years of each decade. I mean, when you think of all the schools in town, that's a heck of an accomplishment. But probably the, the vintage years were the 80s with players like Peter Giftopoulos, Sam DeFeo, uh, Glenn Grant, John Warbluski. So many great, great players that dominated the scene for the whole time that they were in high school. I was lucky enough to only lose two games during my high school career. I think the same is true of Peter Giftopoulos and Sam DeFeo. And they might have only lost one game because I can only think of one game that that group of people lost. The rest of the time, they were dominating the city, dominating the province. Uh, we would go to play in international tournaments um, and often play against USA Today ranked teams and beat them. One year we played in, um, in Pennsylvania and we beat a team that was ranked number one in the state of Pennsylvania. And the next thing I read in the paper the very next day, they fired the coach. So that's pretty serious. That's a pretty big accomplishment uh, in a sense for us. Not that we we're hoping to get the coach fired, but I mean, that's, that's uh, how important the, the game is in other parts of the world. Uh, and, and I'm interested to note that despite the fact that they were good basketball players, they were also good in the classroom, you know? They, they all went on and, uh, you know, I think most of them have a master's degree now. I know Keonic from the early 80s has a master's. I think Mark Daly has a master's degree as well. Um, they are people who valued education and, and learned a lot about different cultures and different ways of life around this place. And it's infectious. And I always loved that about the place. The, the 94 team was, was uh, an electric team. They were full of power and aggressiveness and uh, speed. Um, and I used to tell Steve Magger, who was our point guard, and Steve, by the way, became a National College Player of the Year, TSN Award winner, three-time All-American, or All-Canadian, rather. A uh, great, great young man and great player in those days and, and still is giving back to the community today. Well, I used to kid Steve that he was the brains of the team and Joe Martin, Chris Clark, who are our wing players, were both outstanding athletes. As fine a, uh, an athlete uh, was Joe Martin as I've ever seen. I, I saw Joe do things with the basketball that I've never seen anybody do at the pro level, at the international level. Uh, I remember clearly one time there was a dunk competition and Joe made a move from the baseline and he flew up in the air, he pulled his shirt over his head, he laid out parallel to the floor and dunked the basketball. I mean, it was the most athletic thing I've ever seen in my life. To this day, I haven't seen anything like that. Besides being a great athlete, Joe is probably the classiest guy I've coached in 40 years of basketball. Joe is now a teacher and coach in Mississauga. Great, great young man. His family's beautiful. Um, on the other wing was Chris Clark. And Chris Clark's dad was a preacher. A uh, Baptist preacher, and uh, Chris learned a lot of lessons, I think, from his dad. He could talk all day long. Uh, if, if we were going to meet as a team at 6.30 to go somewhere, I would tell Chris, 6 o'clock, you know, and then he would be on time at 6.30. Fashionably late all the time, Chris, but a great young man. Starting at the power forward was uh, Chad Calhoun, and uh, Matthew Gruel started at the center spot. And that team was full of 
enthusiastic athletes who uh, were all on the same page. You know, there were 16 players on the team and some of those players never got to play in some of the games that we played. They, uh, the fact is that they never complained. They still brought it every day in practice. And I totally believe as a coach that the quality of your practice has a lot to do with the quality of the players who are not the stars of the team, the role players, the, the guys who know that they get out there and they grit it out every day. God didn't give them the same amount of ability as somebody else, but you know what? They're making their contribution. And I always used to liken it to the spokes on a wheel. You know, all the spokes are all the same size, but if you're missing a few spokes, that wheel doesn't turn very well. It wobbles. And when all the spokes are there and they're all tightened to the same degree and they're all in the same run, then the wheel turns pretty straight. And you know, it's a pretty simple analogy, but the kids understand that. And one of the things I always did as a coach Jay, was I always tried to tell the players that basketball is a tool that can take them anywhere in the world. And that's very evident in the fact that now our players are all over the world and they're giving back to the community. We won AFSA undefeated in 94, won AFSA undefeated in 1998. And the thing about Cathedral to me is that the teaching staff here, and, and I know it's very true to this day, the teaching and coaching staff here really know the kids well. They know who needs a meal, and they know who needs a kick in the backside, you know? And I think that that's what coaches, mentors, teachers need to really be all about. Um, it's not just a game, it's, it's a way of life. And if you can perceive excellence on the basketball court, um, that should carry over into every facet of your life, whether that is in relationships, your academics, whatever there is out there. Um, that striving for perfection and to do something the correct way because it's the correct way, that's what I'm always aimed for as a coach. I know always my assistants uh, felt the same way. The basketball knowledge that people have here uh, is fabulous. It's, um, you know, you can't get a better teach your coach than Ray Cabardas, you know? You can't get a better mentor, a better role model than Ray. Well, he's very approachable, he's very soft-spoken, he's great to deal with one-on-one. -on -one. I hope that today's kids coming in out of grade eight really understand that Cathedral is not about bricks and mortar and seats and, and how many baskets and all of that. It's about the passion that the people have that are coaching the team. But that's to me what the students really have to look at. And I know that that passion is there in Brian, in Mark Maga, and um, certainly in Ray Cabardas, you know. The, the love that they have, the genuine love that they have for what they do for the benefit of the kids, it's top shelf. It's as good as it gets.